you are watching an OraCloud Plus Training as a Service video snippet. Snippets are concise, targeted tutorials explaining how to use, configure, integrate, deploy, and support Oracle's Fusion Cloud applications. Snippets are delivered via FAST, the Fusion Application Support Tool. FAST is accessible via the web at www.oracloud.plus. No more watching hours of learning past style videos to get to the five minute snippet you need. Learn Oracle's Fusion Cloud applications in minutes, not hours. Hello and welcome to the Procurement Transaction Accounting video presentation. This video is intended for beginners looking to learn more about Oracle's Fusion Cloud applications. It explains what Procurement Transaction Accounting is accounts, segments, and overrides in Fusion Procurement Cloud. This video, as all of our video snippets, can be found within FAST, OCP's Fusion Application Support Tool. Once inside FAST, you want to go into the Procurement Cloud Training Group and the Intro to Procurement Cloud Training Center. This video can be found under the Learn menu option. Note, if you don't have access to FAST, you can request that access by emailing your name and your contact information to access at oracloud.plus. Okay, so key topics are as follows. Procurement accounting, the accrual account, the charge account, segments within the charge account, and then how charge accounts slash segments get defaulted. Okay, so first, procurement accounting. Procurement transactions can create two accounting entries. One, a charge account, think of that as the expense entry. And two, an accrual account, think of that as the offset or general entry. So next, the accrual account, this generic account. This is used to summarize groupings of transactions, say RECs, POs, and even probably invoices, etc. It's not visible, or at least the accrual account is not visible on the requisition page, nor do I believe it's visible any of the transactions. Their offset account is visible on their transaction pages. And it does not vary based on the type of purchase. So in our case, IT, furniture, MRL, the accrual account remains the same. Next, the charge account. So this is not generic account, this is specific. And you can see that by the red line in the image showing you that for the Phaser 3610 laser printer, there's a specific charge account. If you had perhaps a t-shirt on the next line, it would have a very different charge account, or at least the segment, if you will. In this case, the 60540 would probably not be 60540. So the charge account is transaction line specific. It identifies the sold to legal entity identifies the requester's department or cost center, sets the GL code based on the type of item being purchased, oftentimes using the category, and is visible on the actual requisition, as you can see there. Next, segments within the charge account. So as you can see here, there are different fields or segments or chart fields if you come from a PeopleSoft world I used this particular example in the demo environments, but there's a company, which is a legal entity, a line of business, a GL account, or what they often call a natural account. You can have a department or what's also, also called a cost center, product or intercompany for back and forth. So these are called segments. They used to be called in PeopleSoft chart fields and they roll into a string in PeopleSoft and here it's just called the charge account. So let's take a minute and look at how charge accounts slash segments get defaulted. So the way that it's all set up, the individual ledger is going to define the accounting options. Within those accounting options or definitions, you have rules. You can have a rule to set the accrual, which could come from a constant. You could have a rule to set the charge account, which could grab the employee expense account, could also set to a constant, could have different ways of setting it based on who you are or different variables. You can have a natural account. Remember I said GL accounts a natural account that could be overridden. It could say, even though you set a constant rather, or a, the employee expense account, if you're using this category, I want to set that natural or GL account. And the same with projects 
and assets. And all of these are different rules and they get called in a different sequence. But this is certainly one of the very unique things about Fusion and gives it tremendous value and consistency because you can call the same rules across GL, across APPO, accounting hub for inbound transactions, you get the idea. And so then lastly, you have to find different sources. You could have a mapping account for a source, a hard-coded source. There's lots of different sources, but you ultimately end up with that expense account or rather charge account, which you can see pointed to the 101.10.6054, the one that we had from the earlier example. But that's how that different accrual or excuse me, charge account gets set or the segments, the different segments within the charge account get set. Okay, so you're ready to go to the next video. Do you understand what accrual and charge accounts are? Do you understand what segments are and what they aren't? If the answer is no, then either watch again or feel free to reach out to me directly. You can see here on the left, that's my email address and I'm always available to answer questions. If the answer is yes, great, then maybe you wanna watch more video. So you can go to our playlist out on YouTube by going to YouTube and searching on AuraCloud Plus Inc. Or you can go from our website to the tool we call FAST, the Fusion Application Support Tool, and you can access the full catalog of our Learn, Use, Configure, Integrate, Deploy, and Support videos online. So that's it for this tutorial. We hope you found it informative and keep watching.